Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. It's your girl, Sonya McQueen, with your mind, your body, your choice. I know you're probably thinking I don't even know the name of my podcast, because sometimes I say it's your life, what are you going to do with it? But my plan originally was to change the name of the podcast every season, um, but have the, the main name. Your mind, your body, your choice, because I speak about things of your mind. I speak about what you're doing with your body and the choices we make, but I keep forgetting, y'all. Anyway, today I want to come and talk to you about, forget what I said about shutting people down. Let's protect people. I did not want to get up and do a podcast this morning. I did not. I did not. I don't even know what day you're going to get it, but. The need to get up and speak about this wouldn't pass me, and I don't know why, but I don't question things anymore. That's going to make one of my listeners really proud for me to say. Um, You know how previously I said when gossips and, and, and people who just like to talk about other people call you or come see you and want to bash somebody else, how you shut them down, either A, You tell them you don't want to hear it. You tell them you don't want to hear it. B, you call that person up and say, hey, you know, let's get this straight. Let's let's all be on one accord, which will forever shut that other person down. Nobody likes to be embarrassed and nobody likes to be outed. I don't care who they're speaking about. You have family members, like I said a couple of weeks ago, who call and speak about other family members to family members and they'll listen. And they'll talk junk about their own cousin, their own brother, their own mother, whomever. They will talk so negatively about that person instead of bringing value, love, and understanding back into their own family. They'd rather be on some foolishness. And I, for the life of me, do not understand that. Especially because I was such a major part of that. Not the giver, but the recipient in my own family. So it it troubles me and it throws me off. But you know, friends do it. People in churches do it. You got a church member in the choir stand dogging another <laughs> church choir member in church. So, you know, God forbid we think that normal everyday people are going to live right. But it's possible, y'all. I said before, you know, shut people down. But I want to add a layer to that. Let's protect each other. I am listening to people call me in such a state of depression or sadness. And it doesn't help when they know people that they care about or or deemed as friends or even people you don't know now on social media dogging out other people. I was telling my husband, One of my uh, Facebook friends posted three women with real profiles. These are three real women, not stars, not people. These are three people you could actually go to their page because their page names were mentioned. And the three women were all facing, their butts were facing the camera. That's the best way to describe it. It's like somebody's taking a picture of you from the back, but they're looking over their shoulder at the camera. So they're showing, you know, their behinds. And I think it said, the only thing I have to offer pose. And I laughed out loud when I read it at first, but then I realized, oh my God, people can actually type these women's names into their browser or their Facebook or Instagram, whatever it was on. And they can comment directly to those people. And I just thought, how cruel to do that. Do you know the negativity those women probably receive just based on one person taking their screenshots and putting them on their page? Oh my gosh, I just, I felt so bad for the women and I don't know them. I don't know if that's the best they have to offer, but I do know that that was something they posted on their own pages. And I've said before, if you don't like what somebody posts, keep scrolling unfriend them but don't make a mockery of them don't all of a sudden now you want to talk about them or or start making negative comments about them it's their page i've said it a million times if somebody wants to post 
200 posts a day talking about I just woke up like this, but you know they've been woke for an hour or how you wake up and now you sitting up almost perfectly taking a picture of yourself with your eyes closed. Come on now. But if that's what they want to do, let them do it. It's their page. Keep scrolling if you don't like it. We know the person who follows other people to see what they're doing on their page so they can outdo them. Let them outdo you. You have a whole life ahead of you. So what? They might have more friends. So what? They might get more likes. Who cares? If you are posting for likes, you've really got to rethink your life. Seriously. What I do know, though, is when we see things now, instead of just even telling people, no, we've got to protect each other. We've got to protect people and call out people doing wrong things. So, yeah, I inboxed that friend. I was like, come on, you're better than that. And, of course, he said it was just the repost, sis. It was a repost. But watch what you repost. What business does a 50-year-old have of trying to bring shame to somebody else? Is it your position? Is it your job to shame others or out others? I was watching the news, and I didn't get the full effect of it, but apparently um, a guy was voguing. He was voguing, and... Another guy didn't like it, so he killed him. You killed somebody because you didn't like what they represent. Because they were supposed to represent you? Is that what it is? We're supposed to represent each other now? We're supposed to be cookie cutters? We're supposed to be <laughs> the same? You know, God forbid you're... You're a lesbian, you're a homosexual, you're a transgender, you are bisexual, you are who you are. If it doesn't fit my bill, it's not acceptable. It's not acceptable for a man to want to be with another man. It's not acceptable for a woman to be. And then everybody wants to cite the Bible. Everybody wants to cite the Bible. Well, good. But if you're not God, who are you to judge because you have your own issues? You have your own turmoil. You have your own mistakes or downfalls or what other people deem as downfalls. Because who are you to say that the life somebody else is living is wrong? But let's just pretend for a second it is. Worry about the person in the mirror. Remember... The glass house with the cracker roof and the cotton floors, that's where you're living. Worry about your floors getting wet and giving way. Worry about your roof getting wet and giving away. And worry about somebody throwing a stone in your home, bouncing a ball and shattering it. Worry about you. And stop worrying about other people. But for those of you who don't cast judgment, protect the people who are being judged. Don't just turn a blind eye. Forget that. Protect them. People are killing themselves based on the way other people are treating them. Kids are killing themselves based on the way the kids you're raising are treating them. We're okaying kids from bullying other kids. We're not checking our kids' social media to see what they're doing, to see who they're talking about, to see how they're representing you on social media. Forget how they're representing themselves. You got a 14, 15, 16-year-old child living under your roof, and you check their social media, and they, they're half-naked, tongue out, acting like Meg the Stallion. Come on now. That's a reflection of you. You got your child holding a Uzi, thinking it's cool, it's fake, and you up here, oh, it was fake, it was fake. What y'all tripping off of? We're tripping off of you protecting your child holding a fake Uzi on social media. You got the child bullying your college-age kid 
posting all these pictures. They drunk. They half passed out. They think it's funny. You giving them accolades, ha ha ha, and with them, and they bullying the person who isn't doing that, and you're on that bandwagon. We're looking at you and your parenting. And we want to step in and help that child. We want to show that child this isn't right. They might not listen, but that's what we want. We want to raise the next generation to be level-headed kids. Not listening to this rap music talking about popping mollies, busting guns. They think it's fun now to get high because all these rappers say it is. I love rap music. Don't take that wrong. But I ain't around here popping nothing. Popping nothing. I'm not, you know, I, I was amazed. I don't watch videos. You know, I haven't watched videos in years, music videos. But when I was young, I loved music videos. I remember... Um, and it was such a plethora. It was a mix. It was a beautiful mix. I remember watching Michael Jackson. I remember watching Prince. I remember watching U2. I remember watching Rod Stewart. Uh, all those videos were lovely. All of them. Now, the music videos, I uh, was scrolling on TikTok. Don't ask me why, but I don't know if it was TikTok. It was something I might have been on anyway. It showed a video, this guy had a video, and all these women were half naked. They had these little bitty bikinis on, and they were twerking, and they were twerking on each other, and they were humping this, and they were humping that, and they were twerking this. I can twerk. I'm a bad girl. I can twerk. But I'll be damned if I'm going to do it to demean myself, and that's how I feel. Apparently, that's not how they feel, and I'm not knocking them. I promise you I'm not. But I just thought, what a long way we've come to where we just had music that we vibe to and used to love to watch the videos to where now these men have women doing the most to be in a music video. And there's so many of them. What makes you stand out? Oh, I'll tell you what makes you stand out when you do the most most, right? That's how Superhead got her start for doing the most most. But then... As I was sitting here with my mouth open because, you know, I'm old, I'm behind. A female that I, I have some of her music, her rap video came out and she was naked almost. I was like, what the hell? You are naked in your own video and you popping and you twerking and you cry. Y'all, it is a new day and we've got to protect our kids from what they deem as this is it. Is this really it? Is this what we want our kids to watch and emulate? Or do we want them to emulate things that are more valuable, like the videos or the singers or whatever, that actually know they can keep their clothes on because their songs are that powerful? I don't remember Whitney Houston ever being naked in a video or video in a bikini, uh, a thong, popping stuff. But she is deemed one of the best singers ever. Think of some of the best singers. I There are two I, I've spoke about more than once here, Jasmine Sullivan and Selena Johnson. Even though they are highly rated, I still think they're underrated, right? And they ain't naked for nobody. But I see them getting invitations everywhere. You know why? They are being poised because of their voices and what they bring to the table. Not because of how many people they screwed in their reputations or how naked they are. And I don't want to go down this rabbit hole, which I don't even know why I started going down it. Other than to say, if you have school age kids, pay attention. Pay attention to what they're valuing, what they're looking at, because what happens is after a while, they're going to want to start to look like that. They're going to think that's what everybody is in love with. I got to have that big this or that small that. And then they're going to start body shaming themselves. And then their friends are going to body shame them too if they don't have it. 
And if you're not paying attention, that depressed child is your child. That sad child is your child. Because we're not feeding our kids anymore what's right. And that's the love themselves and the skin they are in. Just the way they are. Now, there's nothing wrong with it. Some of us wanting to improve ourselves naturally. Um, I went to a wedding yesterday, my husband and I, and I took these pictures. I thought I looked fly, you know. I'm a very basic person. I, I, I've said it a million times. I don't wear weaves. I'm not into makeup, but I love to dress nice and I love heels. So I curled my hair and, and took one minute and 14 seconds to put on a little makeup and I took these pictures and I was like, I look so fly. And then I got home and looked at the pictures. And all I noticed was how big my belly has gotten. And I thought, oh my God, I am so big on working out and exercising. Now, that bothers me enough to know I need to get my butt back out there and start doing what I, I, I've been doing all my life. Staying fit and exercising and taking care of myself. I still exercise, don't get me wrong, but I haven't cared about what I was eating, and it's been raining so much, and it's been hot. Those are great excuses. It's raining, it's hot, it's this, it's that, but I have all this workout equipment in my house, and there's, uh, in, in the subdivision I live in, there's a, a clubhouse with a weight room, but I have excuses, and I have all my kids, my grandkids are here. You know, and I, I can't do this and that because they're here, but they're excuses. So when I looked at those pictures of myself, I could have body shamed myself, which I probably will do, but not in a really bad way. What I noticed is the first thing I did, I sent my friend a picture and she was like, you upstaged, you and your husband upstaged the bride and groom. And my response was, look at that stomach. I pointed it out to her. I pointed it out. We got to be careful about how we treat ourselves. We got to be careful about how we allow people to treat us and talk to us. Even when we see something, we don't need other people pointing out our own imperfections. And it doesn't help it when we point it out to them. And then we, I don't know what we expect. I just expect you to agree with me. But a lot of people expect you to say, no, no, no. You look great. You're fabulous. And when they don't get that, they're setting themselves up for failure. This podcast is about a few things, you guys. Number one, protecting each other. Protecting each other. Not just walking away, but protecting each other. If somebody called me right now and was, you know what? Here's a great example. There's a family member who used to call me, and all they did was badmouth other family members. And I said one day, listen, all you ever do is talk negatively when you call me. That's it. I hang up with you, and I feel bad for people. And it shouldn't be that way. When you call me, don't call me to talk bad about other people. I don't want to hear it. I swear to you, that was about three and a half years ago, and that person has never called me again. And I'm okay with that. I'm sure they call other people who love that foolishness. But I am not on that. When you embarrass somebody or stop them in their tracks, they will either change their ways, their behaviors, or they'll cut you out of the equation. Any way it goes, good. And then when you see them around another person and they're looking you up and down, you know they found somebody on the same same band that they're on. And that's a person you know you need to avoid too then, right? But what you do is you protect the people that they are trying to harm verbally because it leads to emotional, mental abuse or pain or discouragement. People, that cutting is real. People cut themselves. They, they get depressed. They start having anxiety. They're always worried about what other people say and think. Y'all, let's get back to a place where we're just happy. 
we love ourselves and we love each other. And if we don't like each other, we know how to gracefully just don't bother with each other. Why do we have to tell everybody when we don't care for somebody? Because we want other people to feel the same way we do. Even if they do feel that way, that's their gripe to bear, not yours. You want to know why such and such doesn't like such and such too. Oh, so y'all can compare notes. No, no. Your name is your name. That person's name is their, their name. Whatever their gripe or issue is, it's separate from yours. Even if it happened at the same time. We don't pick up things the same way. We don't share the same energy. We don't share the same minds. Let their issue be their issue and yours be your issue. But you don't have to come together to share the air and verbally assault a person. You don't have to do that. You know you cannot care for somebody and still greet them. You don't have to hug them, embrace them, and pretend like you care about what's going on in their life. There's nothing wrong with saying hello and keep it moving. You don't have to, oh my God, look who it is. You don't have to do all that. All it does is pull attention to you. Like I said, you don't like what somebody's doing on Facebook, keep scrolling. You constantly don't like what they're doing, unfriend them. Don't, don't pretend to be their friend if all you want to do is find fault in them. You don't like the way somebody acts. Don't be around them. But you don't have to call other people to throw them under the bus or talk about them or share that dislike. And watch your kids so that they don't emulate what you don't want them to emulate. That's a lot for one podcast. But it was all on my heart. And I had to get up and say it all. We've got to protect our kids. We've got to protect our friends. We've got to protect our family. We've got to protect our neighbors. We've got to get back to a time where we loved each other. And we didn't want, and we wanted to emulate our parents or our grandparents, our aunties and our uncles. Not all these rich people whose lives we don't really know. We just see what they're doing on TV and in music, and we think that's what we want. You don't know what you want because you don't know what they really have. You just know what they're trying to show you so you can spend more money on them. Like they said, Beyonce's a billionaire and still charges more than most anybody for her concert tickets. And people will forego their rent to go to her concert. And then she goes home with her millionaire, billionaire, excuse me, husband, while you go home to an eviction notice. (laughs) This is your girl, Sonya McQueen. You might not have liked it, but you needed to hear it. You know how to find me. I'm Sonya M at ledbymotivation.com or ledbymotivation07 at gmail.com. You have a great day on purpose, and I will talk to you tomorrow.